Good morning, and welcome to the Mount Zion Primitive Baptist Church, St. Petersburg, Florida. Let us pray. Dear gracious and heavenly Father, we come before you as humbly as we can. Asking you, Lord God, to just bless us today. Lord God, there's so many people that's grieving, there's so many that's out there that is looking for healing, there's so many people that's looking for financial breakthroughs right now. So, Lord God, we know that you are able. We know, Lord God, that you can do anything. So, Lord God, we just ask, we pray right now for the church, for the church. We pray right now for this nation, one nation under God. We pray right now for our president. We pray right now, Lord God, for our government. Lord God, we pray right now that we're going to get through this pandemic. So, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, we pray and we lift you up in the name of Jesus, Lord God. And we pray especially for the church and each and every believer, praying for each and every ministry, praying your strength, praying your encouragement to the believers on this day. Lord God, I lift up Sister Edna Vaughn, Sister, uh, her name is Althea Green this morning in the name of Jesus. I lift up my mom in the name of Jesus. I lift up our pastor in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we pray. I lift up my cousin Lynn in the name of Jesus. Yes, God. We pray. We pray to, on this day. We lift up those who are in the hospital, those who are in the rehab centers. Yes, today. yes. We lift up those who are at home sick today. Yes. We lift them up in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We thank you and we pray. And Lord God, may the words of my mouth be the meditation of my heart, be acceptable in my sight. Lord God, I ask for a special anointing on this word as we study together, rightly dividing. I pray for understanding for all of those who are hearing. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I welcome you again on this Sunday, July 25th. We're studying from the book of Romans. Chapter, chapter five, and our lesson is dealing because we're dealing in this unit of faith and salvation, and so our lesson today is saying peace with God, peace with God. Now, before I get further into the lesson, I've had people reach out uh, with questions, and if you have any type of questions or prayer requests. Please send it to me in the email, and I put it on the screen there, info at mzpbc.org. If you have any type of questions, if you just want to ask me some questions about the lesson, some things that you've been studying in this word, because it's so wonderful to know that people have a hunger and thirst after righteousness and just want to get more into the, into God's word. Amen. Amen. Peace with God. Romans chapter 5. <clears throat> Peace with God. My name is Sister Laura Hunt. My pastor is Elder Greg Murray. Didn't say that this morning. Amen. <laughs> Peace with God. In Romans chapters 1 through 4, Paul focused on sin and justification. And so the preceding chapters after that, especially chapter 4, he moves on to deal with one spiritual growth that every believer needs to have in order to understand. Because you know, you can read the Bible, but if you don't read with the understanding, you can't grow if you don't have understanding. And I always tell people, when before you read and study God's word, always pray for the anointing of the Holy Spirit to give you the understanding, and then he will open it up to you to be able to receive. So in chapter 5, Paul shows us justification, how justification involves reconciliation. Now, I guess people out there saying, well, what does justification mean? Well, let me tweak it. It's a legal status before God. It means that you have been justified. You've been made, you have been declared innocent, mm -hmm. okay, before God. And there was a way we got to that point. As before we stand, that's with his son Jesus Christ. Now, reconciliation describes our, our 
had a relationship with God. Because we have to have the justification before we can reconcile with God. And in chapter 5, it's going to talk about how all this came to be and what we were before. Mm -hmm. Okay? So chapter 5 opens up and it says, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And that's our thematic scripture. We have peace with God. He says, therefore, and my late pastor, Elder Warren, I hear me quote him a lot. He always said, whenever you see the word therefore, you should ask the question, what is it therefore? Well, the therefore, to tell you, is connected. And Paul is here connecting the dots from chapter 4 in Romans to where we are. Right? And he says, we have therefore been justified right, right, right. by faith. Yes. By faith. Thank you, Lord. We have been we have been made innocent by our faith in Jesus Christ, and we are now at peace with God. Mm -hmm. We are at peace. Yes. So we are no longer God's enemy. Oh, somebody saying, "Well, how are we enemies with God?" Because we were in sin, mm -hmm. and because of sin, we could not even show our face before God. Because sin covered us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sin covered us. We didn't have that reconciliation because once and further in the chapter that we're not going to cover today, we talk about what Adam, the Adam sin and brought condemnation upon all of mankind. Mm -hmm. So, but now we said, Paul is saying, based on our spiritual growth and our understanding, we are now justified by our faith in Jesus and because of that we have peace with God through our Savior Jesus Christ. I can stop right there and just sit down. <laughs> I can stop right there. Amen. To know that we're no longer an enemy That's right. of God. Thank you God. That's right. Amen. Longer, we are no longer God's enemy. We are friends just like Abraham was a friend. We are now friends and at peace. Peace gives you that serenity of a conscience that we are now in the state of being that we can be before God at peace. Yes. Because we're not friends. He says, through whom we also have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. We got access through grace. And I said it last week, what does grace stand for? It's God's riches at Christ's expense. Yes. That's grace. Amen. And guess what? No amount of anything you can do, Sister Shirley, or you, Sister Joni, mm -hmm. could make it possible that you could buy your way through grace. Hmm. It's something that was freely given. It's a gift. It's grace. God's grace. We have access straight through him through the grace of our Savior Jesus Christ, which we stand and rejoice in the hope of the Lord. See, there's nothing anymore keeping us from going directly to God. And the way we go to God is that we have to go through the Son. And the only way you go through the Son is that you got to believe that the Son, Jesus Christ, is the Son of God. Amen. Mm -hmm. You go through him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Before Jesus Christ died, the Jews, because the Jews had this barrier of the, in the temple, you had the separation of the curtain from the most holy of holiest place. And the only one that was allowed back there was the high priest. Mm -hmm. And they were only allowed back there once a year on the day of atonement. But, then you had Gentiles that would come into the temple courtyard. They were not only allowed because it was a wall that separated them from entering. I'm talking about the males in entering into the temple. So they had a barrier with the wall, the Gentiles did. And the rest of the Jews had that barrier, the male Jews, they still had that barrier of the curtain. Mm -hmm. But here, Paul is explaining to them, we no longer have a barrier of a curtain or a veil or a wall that separates us, we can go directly to God ourselves through the Son, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. 
and we can rejoice in the hope and the glory of God. We ain't got to have no true confessions and take it over here, take it to the pastor, take it to the Pope or whatever. We can go straight to him. Because I'm telling you, there's been some of us had some midnight hours where we could just wait and say, I need to make an appointment with somebody mm, to Lord. have a confession. My Lord. In the midnight hour when you're in pain, in the midnight hour when you're in need, and your midnight might not be at midnight. Your midnight is going to be in the middle of the day. But when you and me, you ain't got time to try to say, oh, I know I can call. You can yes. just call on the name of Jesus. Yes. You can call on him. Because you got access. Mm -hmm. Direct access going through the sun. So there's no longer any barriers. They all have been removed while he was dying on the cross. That veil was torn from the top to the bottom as he died. And it no longer exists when he resurrected himself. Now, verse 3 says, and not only that, but we also glory in tribulations. Mm -hmm. Notice it says in. Mm -hmm. Didn't say out. We glory, tribulations means we suffer. I don't know who told you that once you become saved, everything is going to be rosy, sunshine is going to be every day. You will never go through anything. Because if that's what you believe, I'm here to tell you, that's, now that's the big lie. Not that somebody's supposed to let you, but that's the big lie. Mm. Is to know that as a believer, we will go through tribulation. And he, but he says, but we also glory in the tribulation. Mm -hmm. Because as we glory in it, there's a purpose for it. All right. There's a purpose for it. Amen. There's a purpose for it. That when we're going through some things, yes, God. those of us on the bed of affliction, and whatever your bed of affliction may be, it might not just be a physical ailment that's going through your body. Mm -hmm. It could be anything that you are suffering and going through. It could be something in your marriage. It could be something in your relationship with your friends and your family members right now. Yes. It could be some things that's going on in the church. It could be some things that's going on in your job situation. That's right. But just know there's a purpose for it. All right. And it says, knowing that tribulation, it produces perseverance. And what is that? That is the patience. That's the, that's the strength that you would need to endure the hard time. Yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. I've been there. I feel like I want to speak on a personal note. Mm -hmm. Well, you want to give up. That's right. Throw in the towel. Yes. The Lord just take me out of this one right here. Mm -hmm. That's right. It's Thank been you. bad. Absolutely. Everything mm. coming all at you. Mm -hmm. That's right. Look like you don't have friends and nobody to go to. Right. But it's a hard time. But, but as believers, when we really want to give up, something inside won't let us do it. Praise God. Believers persevere, are, are people that can persevere, they cannot give up. Because yes, all you have to do, you ever just got so bad with it that all you said, Jesus, Jesus? Yes. And then you felt the strength come? Yes. 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 Jesus. We push forward. Push and you know what it does? That perseverance pushes forward to your character. Yes. What is the character? That character is whom you become after going through. Help me, Holy Spirit. A coal, when you see going into the diamond mine, it doesn't look like that brilliance mm -hmm. of a diamond. Mm -hmm. It looks like something that's dirty. Mm -hmm. And so it has to go. You have to put it in the fire to purify. Right. And then after you purify, you can wash it. Yes. Then when you wash it, you cut skin and the brightness that comes forth. Because that's what he does with us. When we go through our tribulation, we go through our perseverance and the character that comes forth, we come out of our trial, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. molded into a better person. Right. Better than you thought you could be. Yes. Better that you got through this situation. Yes, yes. And if he got you through this, guess what? He did you through that. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. right. Yeah. Praise this, God. This that. yeah. That's what he will do for you. Yes, he right, will. Right, and right. lastly, character produces hope. Going right back to verse 
remember? In verse number two about rejoicing in the hope of the glory of God. It produces hope. Yes. Hope is the confident expectation of something good. Hope. Hope. That your trust is in Jesus. Hope. So you go through this cycle over and over. It goes up. So as you go through this, mm -hmm. he takes you on a little higher. Mm -hmm. So that when other sufferings and tribulations come into your life, you say, well, I know who my God is. That's yes, right. I know who, where my hope is. Yes. Almost that my hope is in, is in my help. My help is in my hope. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I know who can help me. And so I know that I'm going through this for a purpose. And a lot of times when he's putting you through this, he's getting you prepared. That's true. For your journey. That's true. He's getting you prepared. So you know what? He's right. We should rejoice in knowing that God is going to get us through this and we should give him glory. Because one thing I know about suffering, you know, that's all we need. Right. It doesn't pass always. Now, hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given unto us. Hope, and you're looking for something good, it doesn't disappoint. Mm -hmm. Hope in Jesus never disappoints because he's able. Amen. Because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts. For God so loved the world, mm -hmm. he gave. Thank you, Lord. His only begotten son. Because of the love that God had. God so loved the world that he bridged the gap between <clears throat> us and being his enemy. He wanted to unite us again mm -hmm. and bring us into perfect harmony with him. Mm -hmm. So he sent his son. And then he also sent the Holy Spirit as our another gift that he bestowed upon us. And this empowerment of the Holy Spirit empowers us to act in love. Guess what? Even when we know that's not what we really want to do. <laughs> Thank you, God. Even when we didn't want to do it. Yes, yes. We had to do it because the love of God in us. Yeah. The Holy Spirit. Yes. That's right. We had to. So, for when we were still with, without strength, in due time, I like this, <laughs> in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. Now, let me be clear. The book of Romans is really not written to unbelievers. This letter is written to the believers. Mm -hmm. So in due time, God's time, God's plan for salvation was for Christ to die. He set it up. Mm -hmm. He set this up. God set it up the minute the first Adam came. He set it up. In his time, not man's time, because man had nothing to do with it. In his time, mm -hmm. God set this up for the purpose of salvation, for the ungodly. That was all of us that are now believers, mm -hmm. all of us who were enemies of God. God had a purpose and a plan for us to be redeemed. He had a plan of salvation. But the question is, Paul says, so well, scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet perhaps for a good man, someone will even dare to die. You know, a righteous man, someone who is right with God, and somebody who's a good man, he's doing good things. Now, everybody said, well, you know, I'll die for my children, or I'll die for my mom or my dad. I hear you out there talking. <laughs> but I'm talking about when you die for people who you don't even like. And then soldiers, I hear some soldiers, well, I died, I stand for my country. But I'm talking about the whole world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about the whole world. Not just these United States. And I'm not talking about just in your household. Mm -hmm. Sir, your son. Your son. I'm not talking about that. Mm -hmm. Will you die for the whole world? It's quiet. Mm -hmm. Can you bring the sanctuary? Mm -hmm. <laughs> But, I've been trying to get verse 8. But God demonstrated his own love toward us. But God showed us his love toward all of us. Mm -hmm. In that, 
while we were still sinners, mm -hmm. nobody was saved. Even when God made the promise after Adam's sin, God made a promise in Genesis chapter 3 that he would send something. Go back and read scripture. He said that. While we were still sinners, before we got to know who Jesus Christ was, guess what happened? Christ died. For us. For the ungodly. Christ died. Christ gave up his life. So that's how God proved himself worthy of all of our praise and worship. That's how God showed himself and showed his love. He didn't pick and choose. He loved. And it is, and he wants all to be saved. Because he knows he wants to pick and choose who can be saved. Mm -hmm. But that's not how God works. God wanted everybody, so he said, he showed himself. God showed the love to the world while we were still sinners. Before we even understood Christ, he died. So much more then, having been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath through him. Christ's blood justified, made us innocent before God. And, thank you, Holy Spirit, it was able to cover our sin so that when God looked at us, it was the blood he saw. So when God smelled us, it was the blood of Jesus he smelled. So we could stand in this presence. That's what it did. And it saved us from his wrath because the wrath would be we were going straight to hell. Mm. That was our condemnation from the first Adam. Mm. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son. See, while we were enemies, we were reconciled. We were brought into harmony with God through Jesus Christ's death on the cross. It reconciled us back. And Christ's resurrection ensured that we will live new life with him with hope and eternal life. Is that simple? Mm. All this is what God did in joining us to have peace with him. And not only that, but we should also, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received the reconciliation. Rejoice. That word rejoice is having joy. I'm not talking about emotion when you feel good like that. You say, oh, I got joy, joy, joy. I'm not talking about that. Because that's an emotion. That's an emotion. Yeah. That flips and it's fickle. That's just emotion. But the joy that we rejoice in is a constant sense of gratitude and praise for all, all that God has done and will do. Mm. That's the rejoicing I'm talking about. All right. Having a constant gratitude. Rejoice in praise and worship. Rejoice unto God Almighty. Rejoice, that's a sense of gratitude. That's a constant, that's a constant because of his grace and his mercy. God has demonstrated and shown us. And if you read on further down there, you got to find you go out and read all of chapter 5. Because in chapter, in verse 15 of chapter 5, it talks about how Adam brought condemnation to the whole world. Amen. But how Jesus brought reconciliation for the whole world. Amen. That, it, that it was Adam that brought sin, but it was Jesus who brought grace and mercy. Thank you. It was Adam that separated us. But it was Jesus who brought us right together. Thank you, Lord. It was Adam that caused this division and confusion. But it was Jesus that united us in love. Thank you, Jesus. So the reconciliation, Thank we you, now Jesus. have that, we have received that reconciliation once Jesus Christ died and rose again. Yes. And all we have to do is get this understanding and just believe on Jesus Christ. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace through with, with God through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Mm. What a friend mm. we have in Jesus. Amen.
Amen. Jesus even said in John chapter 15, he said, you are no longer my servants because now I can talk to you. I can deal with you. I consider you my friend. We don't have a dear lot enemies with God as believers. We are friends. Mm -hmm. And friends love one another. Amen. Being at peace with God. May God bless you and may God keep you. And again, if there's any questions, please do not hesitate to send out a message to me. Um, info at mzpbc.org. Have questions, but I advise you to continue to read all of chapter five. Peace with God. Blessings upon you today. Amen. Amen. Amen.